Are you hungry? I know I am. Let's get cracking. What's up guys, my name is Jacob, this is Conscious Cooking, and today, my chair is squeaky as always. I really need to switch them around for one that's not a squeaky. Today we're making chicken Caesar salad. Minus the salad, because I can't have salad. Basically, one of the things that personally I have to deal with with my Crohn's disease is I have to have a much lower fiber diet than most people do. So I can't have salad. Which is unfortunate because I actually like salad. I know most people don't. I do. I genuinely enjoy eating it. And my favorite was Caesar salad. I always liked the ones at the restaurants that I've worked at. So to kind of deal with that, I've devised a plan. A very ingenious plan. I've thought of a way to get all of the components, except for of course the you know lettuce, all the com other components of Caesar salad together, in a little bit of just reorganized, I would say. So here's what we're going to be doing essentially. You're going to get your favorite Caesar salad dressing. You're going to put it in a bag with some chicken breast, and you're going to marinate that overnight. And then we're gonna make like Texas toast style croutons. Rather than, you know, just little pieces, it's gonna be one big piece. So basically you're gonna have Texas toast and chicken, but it's gonna be the same flavor profile as a chicken Caesar salad. That's the plan as of now. Now, why are we doing this? Well, salad is extremely good for you because you know greens are healthy you're supposed to eat them however if you have a condition where you can't you know consume high fiber foods you still want a way to get the nutrients from it so chicken caesar salad is a perfect example it has carbs in the croutons it has protein in the chicken it has you know vitamins minerals and vegetables in the lettuce i can't have the lettuce I'll probably have some carrots or something along those lines on the side separately. Not the point. The point is we're still going to get the carbs and the protein from the chicken, and we're still going to get the flavor of the Caesar salad by combining them and rearranging them to fit the needs of your medical condition or my medical condition in this case. And you can do this in a lot of other ways too. Like let's say you really like pizza. I like pizza, but I can't have cheese. I also can't really have tomatoes because it gives me really bad acid reflux. There are always ways for you to get around that. For example, there are a lot of alternatives to cheese. A lot. There's soy cheese. There is, like, there's cheese made from other types of milks. There's a lot of different aspects that you can do with that. As for the tomatoes... There are ways to not necessarily mimic, but you can get a lot of the flavors that you are familiar with without having to deal with the acid from the tomatoes themselves. It's, it's a lot more difficult, and it's not going to be the same. It's, it's not. That's one of the things that I really want to stress in this video, because... And I'm not only stressing this for all of you, the viewers, I'm also stressing this for myself. It's not going to be the same. And yeah, that sucks. It's not going to be the same. If you get diagnosed with Crohn's disease or if you get diagnosed with ulcerative colitis or any of the IBD, anything that's in the IBD family, your life's not going to be the same. It's just not. And yeah. It's not a very pleasant wake-up call, but it's a chronic condition, and you have to learn to adapt to it, and you have to learn to come to terms with your life being different. When I first got diagnosed, I was miserable because all of the foods that I would eat on a regular basis, I couldn't really eat anymore because they would upset my stomach so much. 
One of the huge ones for me is Chinese food. There was a Chinese food restaurant. I got diagnosed back when I lived in Florida. There was a Chinese food restaurant that I would get at least once a week. The delivery guy knew my name. I knew his name. Like, this was my place. I love this place. But I couldn't eat it anymore because the food there was too greasy and would upset my stomach. So I had to adapt. I started making my own. It wasn't as good. It wasn't the same. And that's what you, that's what I needed to come to terms with. And that's what anybody with these sort of conditions has to come to terms with is that things aren't going to be the same. And I'm not trying to be, you know, a downer because you know, there's always blessings in disguise. I eat much, much, much healthier now than I did before I got diagnosed. I don't eat fast food anymore. I drink way less soda. I don't drink a bunch of energy drinks or stuff like that. I live a much healthier lifestyle. And like I said, there's always a blessing in disguise for whatever happens in your life. So you just have to find the right way to approach your condition deal with it, adapt to it, and move on from there. So that's kind of like the message today. But today's mission, of course, is to as closely as possible mimic a chicken Caesar salad with a twist. So let's get on into it. So riddle me this, folks. Have you ever been to a restaurant and you went, you ordered the Caesar salad or whatever salad you ordered, and you got it, you were eating it, it's delicious, but the croutons are chewy. They're not crispy and crunchy. They kind of like, they don't break apart. They kind of just sit there. Well, there's a reason that that happens. And the main reason for that is because the bread was not staled before the croutons were made. And you're probably thinking, well, how hard is it to find stale bread? Why don't they just use stale bread in the first place? Well, here's the problem with that. Modern day and age, Bakers use dough conditioners, which basically means that the bread that they make is built for shelf life, not necessarily flavor or texture, because the whole point is mass produce it, make sure that it lasts long enough so that it can be bought and then eaten so that it doesn't go to waste. Which is why I'm asking you to do something a little out of the ordinary. Either find a local baker, which you can do by using your favorite search engine. Mine starts with a G. Just a little hint to you guys. Or go to your local supermarket slash grocery store, whatever you want to call it, and go to the bakery section. They should have some bread made in-house there. And the reason that's going to be better is because it's going to be fresher and it's going to have a lot less stuff. Emphasis on the word stuff because it is not stuff that most people can pronounce. It's going to be a lot of preservatives and chemicals and stuff like that that are designed to, like I said, give the bread a longer shelf life. Whereas the stuff that you find in a bakery section or just in a bakery are typically designed more for flavor and texture. Now, to stale your bread is basically to drive some of the moisture out of it without you know, letting it mold or something like that. So the best way to do this is to cut it into the thickness of the slices that we're going to be using. Or if you're making croutons, you would cube it up. But we're going to be doing more of a Texas toast style. So I'm going to cut off one end. Well, I'm going to cut off both ends. But that's going to come in a bit. And as you can see, the texture of this bread, it's already pretty firm. I want to firm it up a little bit more by drying it out. And most people, most people can just leave this out on a couple layers of paper towel on their counter, just out of the way, cool, dry place, and it'll just dry out overnight enough that it'll be able to soak up the garlic oil and turn into a nice crouton tomorrow. Here's the problem. I live with four dogs. I can't leave food out. It will get eaten. So we're going to approach this a little bit differently. And we're actually, well, it's gonna be the same process. The difference is I'm gonna put mine in some paper towel and I'm actually going to put it in the oven. I'm not gonna turn the oven on. I'm just gonna leave it in the oven overnight and just let it dry out. That way it's not in a cold place. It's not in a moist environment like the fridge would be. It's in a cool, dry place 
where it just gets to air out and dry out. And we're just going to do that overnight while the chicken marinades overnight. So I'm going to cut this into th pretty thick slices because, like I said, I want this more of a, like, Texas toast style. And I'm probably going to get a good three or four slices out of this. I didn't get a very big loaf of bread because, you know, I only have three pieces of chicken. I don't need that much. I really only need, like, one piece of toast per piece of chicken. But we'll have a couple of extras, probably. Well, let me rephrase that. We're definitely going to have a couple extras. It's not... This isn't going to be a sandwich, by any means. The... Like I was saying in the introduction for this video, I can't have salad because there's too much fiber in it and it'll you know it'll make my stomach hurt and i don't want to have to deal with that so i'm basically reapproaching the caesar salad which is my favorite salad in a way that i can actually eat it so we got three pieces of chicken we got six pieces of bread i'm going to wrap these up in some paper towel and put them in the oven off very important the oven should not be on just leave them there overnight and we will finish dealing with them tomorrow when we go and get the chicken as well. I'm going to put these off to the side for now, though, because we are going to deal with the chicken as well. I'm going to move the knife off. Just wipe off the cutting board. It's just bread. It's not, you know, causing any danger of any kind. Now, chicken. This chicken has been very naughty. It needs to be punished. Which is why we have a meat tenderizer or a meat mallet, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It needs to be punished. There we go. Much better. Did you learn your lesson? Good. Now the real reason that we are doing this is because we want to increase the surface area of the chicken so that it can soak up more of the marinade. And there's a little special thing about the marinade, which you guys can probably see on the screen already. Marinade is salad dressing. You're going to pick out your favorite Caesar salad dressing, and that is the marinade. That's it. Refrigerate it overnight. Like I was saying, refrigerate it overnight. In a bag, I'm just using a regular zip top bag. And that's gonna be it. This is gonna be really simple. I've been craving Caesar salad basically since I got diagnosed with Crohn's. Speaking of which, there's gonna be a video coming out probably later this week or next week about like my life with Crohn's, my story with it just to let you guys in on a little more of the information. But once your chicken is all flattened out, eh, some of it may cling to the board. We're gonna just set it here, dump the salad dressing in. If your salad dressing has one of these little plastic spouts, Grab the knife you used earlier for the bread, pop that sucker out, and just dump. Dump all of that goodness in there. Now, a lot of salad dressings actually say, like this one even says on here, dressing and marinade. Dressing and marinade. Um, I don't typically use these as marinades. I usually make my own, as you've seen on the show before. But for this specific instance, when I'm truly making Caesar salad style chicken, I really don't mind using it. We're going to refrigerate this overnight while the bread stales in the oven off overnight. And we, I will be back tomorrow and we will deal with all of this and it will be delicious. So I will see you all soon. So folks, there's one more thing that we're going to need. And I was about to go to bed. <laughs> And I remembered, crap, I need this. So you're gonna need about one cup of garlic cloves. And then you're gonna need olive oil. Not extra virgin olive oil, not extra light olive oil, not light olive oil, just olive oil. 
I know, it's gonna be tempting to get the other stuff. But we're gonna basically just equal the garlic. So there's gonna be one to one ratio, roughly, of garlic to oil, because we don't have that much stuff that we need to coat. And we're just going to, if you wanna do this in your oven, you can do it in your oven. I'm gonna do it on my stove top because my bread is in the oven. But you are just going to put this stuff over about medium high heat. If you're in the oven, about 325, just because you don't want the oil to start to smoke. And just do it until the garlic is completely soft and then just drain it off. That's it. And then we'll get to using it tomorrow. All right, folks, the oven is preheating to 325. Again, we don't want to bring it above 350 because we risk you know smoking of the oil and it degrading in general i made the garlic oil i did it off camera because you know it's a pretty simple process we're going to brush this onto each side of the toast which is currently bread it is not yet toast onto all six pieces well i have six i don't know how many you have and after we brush it on, we're going to put some herbs on it, just to give it a little bit extra flavor. So give me one sec while I finish all of this. All right, before we flip these and do the other side, we're gonna add the herbs. I'm just using an Italian herb grinder. I'm not gonna tell you what brand it is. It's just Italian herb grinder. This one is just basil, oregano, and rosemary. That's it. You can just use those three if you want. Just make sure that they are dried and in at least as close to a powder form as possible. But I'm just going to add this to the toast. This is what's gonna make it even more crouton like because most croutons are you know like garlic and herb which is exactly what we're going for here because we have garlic oil and we have herbs and when you finish brushing these on both sides don't get rid of the oil because we're not quite done with it but flip these over repeat the process and then we're going to put it in the oven until it is nice and crispy i don't know how long it's going to take I'm guessing around 30 to 45 minutes because this is, these are big, thick pieces of toast and we really wanna make sure that we drive out as much moisture as possible so that they're nice and crispy. crispy. But I'm gonna be checking on mine every like, probably 15 minutes just to see how they're doing. One of the reasons you need to be checking on it is that bread is an agricultural product so every single piece is going to be slightly different. And every single loaf is going to be slightly different. It doesn't matter where you get it from or who you get it from. The flour, each grain of flour is different from the grain next to it. It's an agricultural product, so you need to be you know, aware of the fact that it has differences. It has minute changes between piece A and piece B. So just keep an eye on it, don't let it burn. Don't let it, don't let it come out while it's still, you know, squishy and mushy, because then it's not gonna be crouton-like and it's not gonna be, well, toasty, which is what we're looking for. So I'm gonna finish this with the oil, grind on the herbs, and then we're gonna use that same garlic oil to cook the chicken.
because we're going to be doing that in a pan. And this is ready. The oven's almost done preheating. We're going to slide that in there and in about 15 minutes I'll check on it. And after 15 minutes, we'll start with the chicken because I'm not sure exactly how long this is going to take, so we're going to plan accordingly. Okay, folks, so I just checked on the toast. It's been 30 minutes. It's got a nice crust on the outside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the oven off, but I'm going to leave them in there to let them dry out a little more. And while that's happening, we're going to cook the chicken. So we're going to put this over medium heat, we're going to put the oil into the pan, just enough to coat the bottom, maybe a little bit extra. And then we're going to go drain the marinade off the chicken and get ready to cook it. Alright guys, I'm starting to see ever so slightly wisps coming off the oil, which means it's hot enough. I'm going to add the chicken to the pan. And yeah, you're probably going to see some popping. The popping is going to die down quickly. It's just from, basically what's happening is the water from the marinade goes under the oil, turns to steam, and causes the oil to pop up out. That's basically what's happening. Just, you know, keep your valuable body parts away from it and you'll be fine. Now I'm planning on giving this chicken about five minutes on either side because we do have nice thin pieces. I'm not super worried about it taking a while to cook. I'm gonna make sure that it's flattened out onto the pan itself. We have achieved flatness. So at this point, I'm really just gonna wait. All right, the chicken is starting to sort of shrivel and wrinkle up on me, so I feel comfortable. I think it's time to flip. So we're gonna take it off, let the you know, fluids, that's not a pleasant word. Uh, return to where you were standing at before you flip it over, just so that it has something to sort of lay back down on. We're gonna flip the chicken, give it about another five minutes. And then we're gonna take it off and let it rest for another five minutes. And then it'll be just about time to, for plating. So I shall return. All right, folks, it's been about five more minutes. I'm gonna take this off, let it rest for another five minutes, and then we'll be ready to plate. As is almost always the case with my plating, simplicity and elegance is what's important here. Just a couple pieces of toast, plenty of pieces of the chicken, just put it on the plate, let it sit there. Let the food and the flavor of it do the talking. You don't, I'm not looking to go all crazy with presentation. This is mostly for home stuff. You don't need to go above and beyond. That's going to be it for this week. Thank you all so very much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with your friends. You can, of course, find the protocol and the mission in the description down below, as well as a link to my Twitter. So feel free to follow me on there. But that's going to be it for this week. Thank you all once again for your support, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye.